All right. Let's see. Date is July tenth, two thousand twenty. Friday, Friday night. This is how I party. And uh, this is the first uh, drawing video that I'm uploading to YouTube. This is kind of the test video. So if you're watching this, congratulations. Uh, you're the test monkey. Or you're one of the test monkeys. And we're uh, going to monkey around in this drawing application. Uh, okay. So I'm going to start a stopwatch. I got a stopwatch. And... Um, so this video is um, targeted for, or targeted toward, targeted to um, people who want to take their art a bit more seriously, who want to reach the next level, uh, people who want to learn some tips and tricks to get the most out of the time they spend making artwork. Uh, so here's tip number one, time, everything. You can make a really good drawing, but how long did it take you? Uh, same drawing that took you 10 minutes and, and it's impressive if it were to take you 30 minutes maybe not quite as impressive um, and what you want to do is you want to get to the point where you're making really good drawings and you're doing it pretty freaking fast especially if you're in my line of work which is a uh, storyboard artist you have to be fast so I'm gonna go ahead and start the stopwatch and uh, let's see how far we can get in an hour. It sounds good. We're going to check in at about the 30 minute mark. Uh, so first things first, here we are. Uh, you're looking at the Surface Pro in the sub view here. I'm also checking to see how slow my computer is with all these things going on. Uh, let's see. Oh, yep. Yeah, this was a picture of mine that I thought about including in the overlay, but we're not going to do that. So I'm going to get that out of here. And uh, let's see. So yeah, so you're looking at the Surface Pro. This is what I'm drawing on. It's a 2017 model. Um, they've come out with, I think, at least two more models since then. Um, at the time, this was the top, if not the top, spec model. Um, and uh, she's kind of showing her age, honestly. Um, she handles Clip Studio really well, but um, I would kind of shy away from some of the more powerful uh, 3D uh, sculpting applications. Uh, with some of the paint brushes, uh, she slows down. But uh, she's got 16 gigabytes of uh, memory. So she's she's pretty good. She's she's good for comic art. Let's put it that way, and storyboarding. But anyway, yep. And uh, next one here. Uh, so I'm using Clip Studio Paint as the drawing software that I'm using. It's basically uh, Photoshop if Photoshop were designed for comic book artists from the ground up. Uh, some people might say, well, that's what Photoshop is, but I'm pretty sure it started as a photo editing application, and and then they realized that hey, we can. Uh, we can draw with this and they started boosting up those stats but uh yes but this clip studio paint remains true to the illustration parts of what would be photoshop so it's basically photoshop only for drawing it doesn't have a lot of the fancy tools like photo editing tools that photoshop has but it has uh some pretty cool tools of its own um and at a fraction of the cost speaking of costs let's see here uh, so they have the standard, uh, the Paint Pro version, and they have the Clip Studio Paint EX version. So there's the Pro version and the EX version. And uh, you can choose a one-time buying option or a monthly option. Uh, I personally have the one-time EX version, the, the $219 version. Uh, it has some, it has some uh, additional features, the most of, important of which is the story feature. And uh, I'll show you a little, a little bit about that today. Uh, so if you're serious about being a comic book artist or storyboard artist, um, or just keeping better track of your own illustrations, the story feature is, later, believe it or not, worth that difference in money. Uh, let's see. And I'm also using the Clip Studio Tab Mate. 
that's another reason to use Clip Studio Paint. Um, they made their own remote control, and all those buttons on it are fully customizable. Scroll wheel, it's got two buttons, like or, like trigger buttons you can't see. Um, every button in that that circle is pressable and programmable. Um, and it just, it's, instead of using a keyboard and using hotkeys, you, use, you map your favorite functions to these buttons, and it helps you draw so fast, let me tell you. And uh, let's see what else we've got in here. Then the next one is Aurora, and uh, she's what we're going to be sketching today. And uh, full disclosure, I'm very cold. I have not drawn all day long. So we're going to see how the sketching goes while I'm cold. All right, so I, uh, oh, kind of experiencing some lag. Okay. See how you do, computer. Okay, so uh, another tip here is uh, you don't want to zoom in too close ever. Um, so here's like the full page. This is a standard page. This is eight and a half by eleven. As you can see up here, 8.5 by 11 inches, 600 DPI. Um, in the future, I might do 300 DPI, but for now, I guess we're going to try 600 and see how it goes. Uh, generally, for your own illustrations, you're going to 350 DPI is probably good. In fact, it's going to be good for just about everything. In fact, I just worked on a book cover that um, came out on Amazon, and it was in 350 DPI, and it looks looks great but 600 dpi is going to prevent you from running into any problems if for whatever reason you wanted to print your artwork out poster size or something like that um you don't have to worry with the 600 dpi but there's sacrifice it's going to slow your machine down a lot of you probably already know this but i don't know who this who these videos are targeted to yet so just a bad with my so right now i'm kind of checking out the lag See what the lag is like, and uh, there's definitely lag. So uh, I might have to do 350 DPI in the future. Now I'm doing a quick, uh, quick head sketch here. Kind of see what the lag is like. And uh, don't worry, I'm going to go back and kind of explain some of these things. And again, I'm a very cold. And if you if you feel like saying, "All right, guy, all right, guy, we get it. We don't really care. We get that you're cold." Well, ask an experienced artist, and they'll tell you there's definitely a difference between when they warmed up and when they were cold. So the lag is manageable, but I'm pretty sure my next one is going to be 350 DPI. I'm going to have to lower some of the quality settings of the video recording, or I'm going to have to, I don't know, I don't know what I have running. So here is a quick face. And this is kind of my warm-up sketch, I guess. I'm not completely cold now. Don't worry, I'm not going to get any lower there. Let's see, what kind of hairstyle does she have? And then we uh, put her hair back behind her ear. And uh, yeah, there you go. It's not too bad, and that's it. So. There's the actual size of her on the page. Uh, you, if I was to draw her, I of course would want to resize her and bring her up so she fills the page. That way you can work in more detail. Because ultimately you are restricted by the resolution of the image and the, the DPI dots per inch. Let's see, and we're eight minutes in, so eight minutes kind of messing around. It's not too bad. 
I'm noticing some lag here in the resizing. Okay. Oh, that's a significant lag in the resizing. Next one's gonna have to be different. Hmm. Uh, well, while this uh, continues, um, oh, and it's done. Never mind. So check this out. So it's in red pencil. Why is it in red pencil? I like it because it keeps me loose and kind of free flowing. Um, it it can't be the finished image. It's the wrong color. So. I don't I don't get tempted to put like too much finishing work onto it. It's only ever supposed to be there to kind of like get things on the page, to get them to a point where they're kind of feeling right. Um and it's, they're supposed to be fast. And then I like to do a little trick. And I'm not sure if this but if this window's even showing up. I'm gonna have to do a record screen. In fact I'm gonna do that now. But I bet you didn't see that. So let me uh Go into my trusty. Hmm. Trusty uh, settings here, and go to. Uh, Display capture. Now you're getting the whole shebang. Cool. You're seeing everything I see. All right, now we're back. Nope, no, we're not back. Up, oh, yep, shopping for uh, roller plays. You got me. Let's see. So now you should be able to see this. All right, you should be able to see it when I do this. So I'm going to go to this layer sitting. I'm going to come up here to the corner and I'm going to tap that and boom, now it's blue line. And I'm going to add a layer. Now I'm going to come to my uh, favorite, favorite uh, pre-selected pencil here. It's the, well, um, yeah, I'm going to do the real pencil 2H, which by the way is an additional uh, pencil that I downloaded from a website. I don't remember where. Uh, yeah, I don't want to give credit to the wrong person. Uh, yeah, let's try, let's do one. This is how one's going to look. All right, cool. Bring down opacity even more. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer. I'm going to put all my new pencils in this new folder. And, uh, you'll see why in a minute. So now, remember those red pencils that I did super fast? It just went down. Well, now I can go in closer and I can add any kind of detail that I want on top of those red pencils, which have essentially become a blue line. Now, here's the eye that I just drew really, really quickly. Now I can add detail to it. And now some of these details that I'm adding, I'm able to add them because I previously spent time um, studying these individually. I swap the drawing to the other direction so that my I can see uh, some of the lines I want to see a little bit better. 
Um, but as I was saying, the reason I can add these details is because I'd previously spent time studying how to draw an eye, what different eyes look like, um, shapes of them from different angles. I'd already done that work before. If I hadn't spent the time doing that, I wouldn't be able to do what I just did. And you know, I'm thinking at this point, for the purposes of this video, we're going to let this one be Aurora. So now that I know this is going to be Aurora, I know that I want her to have slantier eyes. So I'm going to select her eye, take the transform tool, and boom. Now she's got a little bit more of those uh, slanty elvish eyes. Looks a little more, uh, a little more uh, otherworldly, a little more fantastical. Let's draw our forehead. Now, the thing about foreheads is um, Caucasian women, um, their forehead actually tends to sit. tends to go like up like this it's basically like a like babies have a similar forehead it's the high forehead um, it, it, uh, when you have a high forehead like that high straight forehead it kind of creates the feeling of youth I believe Just the general perception of that uh, some other uh, people like uh, you know they have they might have a little bit more of a, of a slope like this and that's another kind of forehead Maybe not so severe like that um, I think uh, Asian women a lot of Asian women you'll find this kind of forehead uh, half Asian women as well they generally have that, that forehead um, and then since we're looking at foreheads by the way if you were to, to draw this as a guy uh, first of all you want you want to give him more of a ridge here that comes out of the brow and then it goes to the forehead and then also uh, you know they don't, maybe they don't have such a pretty nose you want to believe it or not Giving him a nose like that actually makes him uh, more handsome. Who knew? Give him one of these guys. Yeah. All right. Looks like he's he is large and in charge. Your brow, thicker brow, lower lids. Yeah. Look at that. Now it's a man. Undo, 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 this pronounced cheek like this. If I was drawing maybe like a an NPC, a non-player character, or someone who uh, uh, has a little bit of a different personality, maybe I would uh, let her have that kind of cheek. But I kind of feel like uh, Aurora, this girl. Uh, you see, her cheek is her cheek is uh, oh Jesus. Higher cheekbones is, I think, what I'm looking for. So, using the blue, I'm adapting on the fly. I don't have to follow my blue lines closely, I'm just kind of shaving and adapting in on the fly. And also, the fact that it's Aurora. Aurora. 
is a girl who is, as they say, Sada. And Sada girls have their brow furled ever so slightly. Maybe she's not totally buying what you're selling. And if they're doing that, it only stands to reason that they might be squinting their eyes at you in... What's the word? Scrutiny. Ah... Ah, that's a girl who knows what is going on. Um, and you just saw me quickly add like this panel to the nose. Because when it comes to denoting the tip of a nose, um, it kind of helps to show, you know, you, the goal is to, to convey the contour of the nose in the 2D, 2D drawing. So, so um, some of the more Anglo-inspired noses, they have a uh, prominent cartilage structure, including this, uh, this shape uh, up top, this panel. So uh, I just tend to quickly, um, what's the word, hint at this, uh, at that panel shape. All right, 20 minutes. Let's, uh, let's get this one done in about 30 minutes. What do you think? Not bad. Um, okay, so... Oh lord, rotation takes forever. Good to know. So, uh... I'm looking... Now I'm looking at this area here, and all of this is looking correct to me. I don't not, I don't think I need to make adjustments, so I'm just gonna make alterations and adjustments as I draw over my blue pencils. So, Aurora is an elf. Elves have pointed ears. The question is... Uh, what degree of pointed ear? How big? How severe the points? Uh, let's see. That one, I normally don't draw elf ears that way. I'm not sure what possessed me to do that. But I generally like to start with what would be a normal ear and then just uh, extend it. Like that. And now I'm tapping into previous knowledge that I've gained um, by studying ears on my own, um, just ears alone, just drawing ears over and over. And that's the only reason I'm able to quickly draw that ear in like that with the this cartilage shape here. Uh, you generally have a, a Y shape. Most uh, artists will be able to tell you about that Y. It kind of tucks itself in there. We got like that. It's a kind of generally an ear, but um, yeah. Come on, come on. Oh. It's got some loose strands here. You know what? And let's uh, let's let some hair come down here. And now that I'm getting into the hair part. Um, I'm going to add another layer. I'm going to work on a separate layer. So that way as I add hair strands, I can erase and adjust hair strands without affecting my face, which I just spent so much time on. So, okay, so uh, we're going to put the part a little to the side. It's going to come over this head. This hair, and when you draw hair, you want to kind of think in pieces and shapes and let the hair move as chunks. Um, if you're thinking about individual strands of hair, you're, you're asking for it. So what you want to do is you kind of want to hint at these chunks. And then later, you can go in and add the details of the strands.
Okay, so now we're uh, we're looking good. We made uh, a lot of progress there. Uh, now I'm kind of moving out of the hair onto the body, and guess what? That means it's time for another layer. Now, as we get down to the body, um, just looking at this real quick, I'm pretty happy with the shape of everything here on this body. Looks pretty good to me. So we're going to go to the next step. We're going to jump ahead, and we're going to do clothing really quickly. So guess what clothing gets? It's own layer. But now I'm going to go back to my red pencil because I'm going to use the red pencil because it stands out from the blue and the black pencils that I already did. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and use this to draw the clothing. Now, um, oh, and now my computer really wants to get slow on me. Oh, baby. A lot of times. I will uh, draw all the clothing first before I go in and try to draw um, the pencil layer. I'll do these layers, these uh, clothing layers. Um, but somehow, for some reason, it's just the way it turned out tonight. Um, so yes, but you see how I'm I'm placing the clothes on top of the figure that I already laid down. So, people uh, think it's strange that you're constantly drawing naked people. Uh, don't take them, you know, take their criticisms with a grain of salt because you and I both know that you need to draw, you need to be able to draw good naked people to then put cool clothes on top of them. So this is a breastplate that I I, uh, I gave her. It's a uh, kind of you know it's now my program's trying to auto save. That went surprisingly quickly. And now I'm adding a couple hint lines, and you might be thinking, wait, Zach, I thought you were just adding clothes. Well, I'm adding some quick details here for me to turn into blue lines. When you draw constantly, your mind is making these micro decisions at a rate you couldn't, um, you know, you couldn't achieve deliberately. This just comes with practice. Like I know that I want to take this opportunity to draw and to kind of hint at these figures, at these figure lines, because now's the time. I'd rather do it now than come back to it later. Anyway, this is all just just happened quickly. Um, now I'm thinking I want her to have her cloak. She's got to have her cloak, right? Her cloak. Yep. So uh, another blue layer. Now this cloak lumps up high behind her. Probably wishing I put her hair behind her cloak, but oh well. And then um, let's see here. Let's put the brooch. Or whatever the connecting thing. Put it right here. And it's like this. And this is like that. Got her hood. And uh this comes over to the brooch or whatever that's called, the fastener. like that and then it gets squeezed in there cool so there's her her hood got kind of messy but that's uh this is the time to be this is the time to be messy she's got these designs on her whatever all that all right cool about 28 minutes let's see how fast we can get this done turn it all suddenly ba -ba boom into blue lower the opacity 
add a layer, come back to my pencil tool. And now I can come in here and start throwing down uh, some detail on her clothing. My computer doesn't want to zoom in. Come on, zoom in. I knew you were going to do that. I knew you were going to do that. All right. Cloak. I'm not going to go crazy on this stuff. In fact, I just remembered a piece of advice somebody else said, which is uh, make those shapes. Yeah, I'll take it. And let's see here. You'll notice my lines are getting sketchier and a bit jagged. So I have to make a conscious decision to uh, tone that back. Although to be fair, partly due to the computer slowdown I'm experiencing, which is what this test video is for. So as we get close, um, again, my name is Zach Larez. I'm a professional storyboard artist. I do mostly live action storyboards for commercials, uh, some really cool music videos, which I'll touch on in the future. And uh, I am a novice uh, comic book maker. So I'm getting into comic book art. So uh, in the future, you'll be able to see me depict some of my original comic book characters make some of the pages for the comic books that i will be releasing uh, you're welcome to offer me uh, some advice suggestions for the comic book ask questions and uh, maybe i can help you with some uh, some career questions i'm pretty experienced in the film industry I've worked on over 40 films as a script supervisor on set, which I can talk about in the future. And I've uh, storyboarded quite a few things. I'm not as aware of those numbers since they're not tracked like movies are. Oh lordy. All right, these guys are not getting uh, the love they deserve, but whatever. Priorities. Okay. Now, watch this. Uh, the blue lines go bye-bye as soon as my computer program catches up with me. Come on. Come on. Come on. There we go. You can do it. Say goodbye to those. Say goodbye to those. And now we're just left with pencils. And because of the way I layered these pencils, I can erase the hair that I wasn't aware that I even wanted to erase before. I can erase it without erasing my clothing. Go back to my clothing. Adjust my clothing. And, uh, nope. Now we're layer hunting. Oh, you didn't see that. Nope. Alright. What's the, what's the big idea here? There we go. Hey! It's just supposed to be a sketch, but look, we gotta finish drawing out of it. Because you and me, we know what we're doing, alright? And I'm going to go ahead and see, I saved the eyes for last on purpose because honestly, sometimes eyes are too distracting for me if I try to draw them right away. Um, 
so there's different ways to do this. I think today I'll do the red line, red dots into uh, blue, since that's the uh, technique we've, we've been using for a while. Yeah, those look about right, don't they? Yeah. Let's uh, let's make them blue like we've been doing to everything else. Now that we got the general size right, we can make them. Uh, I'll just trace the contours. Quick tip, you want to put uh, definition, some heavy line weight down around here. Helps get those eyes sunk to the head a bit. And uh, do a quick flip here, see how we did. All right, yeah, not too bad. She's a little bit too forward. Normally I'd be flipping like this all the way through, but 30 minute drawing, you know. Uh, but yeah. Not too shabby. Put pupil in here if it really bothers you. Uh, come on. Well, I'll save that for the next drawing. Um, time to do the old Jean Hancock. And uh, let's add the month. Uh, I want to thank you for being a part of my first YouTube uh, video of this sort. Please continue to come back for more videos, to like and subscribe. That's the first time I've ever said that. And keep drawing. Thank you.